Morning, Church. Um, today we, we're going to revert back to uh, the old way of coming forward and uh, getting the communion and, and going back to your seats due to the increase in the numbers of COVID again. So we've got the three stations again. So at the end, we'll just come forward. Today I'm going to talk to you about events that happened in the Bible. I love to watch National Geographic and History channels on, on, on the TV. And uh, especially those programs where the people, the experts, try to prove or disprove events that took place in the Bible. This morning I want to look at, at just four events. There, there are a real number of, of events, but I just want to take took four out that I want to um, have a look at that people are trying to see whether they happened or, or not. Starting, starting with the creation, they are trying to find the exact location of the Garden of Eden. And he placed, and, and he placed Adam and Eve, uh, God created the, the earth and planted this garden called Eden. And he placed Adam and Eve in this garden, but they sinned by disobeying God. So he banished them from it. And yeah, we have a map. Um, and if you look there, you can see at the top and there are two, two locations. So to this day, the exact location of the Garden of Eden has not been found. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 to 14, that a river flowed out of the Garden, out of Eden, and it divided into four rivers, the Parson, the Gihon, the third is the Tigris, and the fourth is the Euphrates. As can be seen on the picture, there are now only two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates, that uh, flows out of the garden. The second event I want to, uh, to look at is, is the flood and Noah's Ark. The flood happened about 1656 years, 1656 years later. <clears throat> After man was cast out of the Garden of Eden, the so man multiplied on the earth and they became evil. So God caused a flood to destroy all of mankind except for Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives, eight persons in all. In Genesis 7, verse 1 to 5, uh, we read this account, how these eight people went on to the ark. So, yeah, we have pictures of the ark. The ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat and is claimed to have been found by archaeologists. The picture shows a boat shape on the side of the mountains of Ararat and when measured in the, is the same size as the ark uh, measurements in the Bible. This proved there was a flood and God cleansed the earth of all evil. The next event I want to look at happened about 400 years later and has caused a lot of controversy. And it is the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. Put the map. Here's a map that shows supposedly the position where the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. In Genesis 14, verse 19 to 31, we read that God caused the east wind to blow and the waters parted and a path of dry land formed through which the Israelites crossed. When the Egyptians followed, the sea came together again and the Egyptians drowned. There is evidence of chariot parts under the sea and with evidence like this we this the Red Sea crossing according to the Bible is true the last event I want to look at is the death burial and the resurrection of Jesus this happened now about 1990 years after the Red Sea crossing, which makes it round about just over 4,000 years from the creation 
to uh, Jesus' Jesus's town. Jesus was nailed to the cross and died on the cross. He was taken down and buried in Joseph of Arimathea's new tomb and a stone was rolled before the entrance. Matthew chapter 25 verse uh, 27 verse 57 to 60. If we can see yeah, this is what the tomb sort of looked like that Jesus was, was buried in in similar to this now on the third day Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the sepulcher but it was it was empty Jesus had risen from the grave just as he said he would Matthew chapter 28 verse 10 I just want to to read that <clears throat> Oh, Matthew 28, verse. And, be, and be, I'm going from verse 9. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Hail. They came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And now Jesus showed himself to many people after his resurrection. In Acts chapter 9, 1 verse 9 to 11 we read how Jesus ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God. <clears throat> And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them with robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go in, into heaven. But there are skeptics that believe Jesus did not rise from the dead and are looking for his bones to prove this. We know they won't be able to find him because he is alive. Let me show that last picture. This is like supposedly a reconstruction considered by many to be where Jesus was buried. So they're reconstructing this, this tomb. But we know that it does not matter whether they finally find the location of the tomb, or the true Garden of Eden, or whether that it is Noah's Ark, or whether those are the wheels of Pharaoh's chariots in the Red Sea, or whether that is Jesus' tomb. We know the Bible is true and inspired, and it tells us there, there are many other events that took place and this is what we believe. We also know we serve a living Jesus who rose from the dead and he instituted a remembrance feast for us to remember his death and that he died that we may have forgiveness of our sins. Matthew chapter 26 verse 26 to 28. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I shall not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus gave his life for us. He died on the cross for our sins. He instituted a remembrance feast of the bread which symbolizes his body, the fruit of the vine, 
which symbolizes his blood that flowed. And it's this blood that cleanses us from our sins. So all of these people trying to prove or disprove whether these things are true or not. We believe in the Bible. We believe that Jesus rose from the dead and that he is coming again to fetch us when the world ends. So at this time we're going to remember Jesus by partaking of these emblems. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for the Bible, your word that, that inspires us. We thank you that, that Jesus is alive and that we believe in a living Jesus and that we are going to partake of these emblems now to remind us of the, the, the event that happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus gave his life on the cross for us. So as we partake of the bread, we pray that you'll bless it to our bodies. As we take of the fruit of the vine, that you'll bless us. And that at all times we will remember that it's through his sacrifice that we have salvation. In his name we pray. Amen.